Today I'm turning my 30 year old Land Cruiser into a Tesla, sort of. All right, not, a, not an actual Tesla, but we're bringing it into the 21st century. We're gonna be making a homemade custom switch panel for the dashboard, which is gonna have switched on there to do a lot of cool things, which I'll show you. So I've got no keys on me, but then you can flick this button here, and it powers it on. So now that powers up my subwoofer, powers up my head unit off the second battery. Um, and we're also installing a brand new head unit with a huge screen, which I hope is actually gonna fit in the car, but I'll talk more about that later, but first, we're gonna get the switch panel made um, and get it installed in the car. And the whole idea behind having a switch panel is I don't really wanna cut into the dash and hack it to pieces. So I'm gonna make a panel and then house all my switches, USB ports, CD ports, all inside of that. So, and we're also gonna be uh, removing the radio as well. I have my XRS unit just here underneath the dash, but I'm gonna move that away because with the XRS unit, you can, it comes with a little module where you can basically extend it and I'll, I'll show you in a minute but yeah we've got a lot to do today a lot of 12 volts so let's just get straight into it so I began by making a plate out of aluminium that I found in the shed and this plate would basically hold on the front panel and as you can see it sort of follows the contours of the dash I then started to make the actual panel which housed all the switches and the siggy ports so basically measured it all up drilled some holes for them and put them in and then added some flashing just to hide all those cables that you might see from the side so there's a the switch panel in, it looks absolutely grouse. It's come up really nice and actually follows the contours of the dash. So it fits in there really nice. It's got these edgings on it, the flashings on it. So it looks neat, the cables are hidden. I've also relocated the UHF radio down there um, behind the passenger sort of footwell guard. That's basically because with the XRS unit, you've got this little um, extension splitter sort of thing. So you can basically, because it's all on the handpiece, you can extend that out and so that's all hidden and we just have the handpiece there. So it's all nice and clean. And I've got that, I've actually already wired this one up. So you can flick it from starter battery to the secondary battery because the whole idea for this panel is a lot of its functions is going to be able to switch things to the secondary battery. So when you're out camping or whatever and you want to put the radio on the second battery or the UHF on the second battery, you can just flick these switches and do it. And a couple of them are going to be for lighting stuff as well, which I'll talk more about later. But right now what I'm going to do is run power from my 12 volt box and into here. And then from there, once you've got power there, I can start wiring it all up, get the sticky plugs working and everything, and we should be in business. So, so because this panel is gonna be all fused and draw its power from my 12 volt box I made, I'm gonna have to run all the cabling down through the panels on the car. So, so from here, all the wiring is getting neatly tucked underneath these panels and all the way, and that'll go all the way through to the drivers and then up around into my panel there. Because as I explained before, these switches are going to be basically auxiliary power switches to give all these multimedia devices secondary battery power. So when I'm at camp, flick a switch, the radio is on secondary battery, and the subwoofer is on secondary battery. So I'll explain more later, but just a lot of wiring at the moment, um, so we'll get it all run. So here's basically what we're working with. We've got a bunch of double pole, double throw switches, and SIGI USB ports, etc. Um, you might notice that we have a big switch. The biggest switch there is a 20 amp rated switch, which is gonna be for the radio and subwoofer. So, and the rest are just smaller amp um, switches just for basically turning on accessories, UHF, different lights, etc. So that's what that's for. So that's basically how it goes on. So as you can see, I've got a panel here first, which mounts to the actual dash, which which were holes that were pre-existing. I didn't have to do any holes, pre-existing holes. Mounts in there, and then this just bolts onto it so I can easily take it off when I'm wiring up, it makes it a bit easier. So yeah, so run my wires and start hooking up these switches here. All right, update. Wiring to the switch panel has all been completed. I just used a big three core wire to run power for the USB port, cigarettes, and carrying my negative and also carrying a positive which I'm gonna use for the radio and subwoofer. So I wanted that on a separate circuit to these just because I think the new head unit's gonna draw a bit of power plus nine amps for the subwoofer. So yeah, anyway, I got that all tucked in really nicely, running cable through here, up behind the dash and into here. So that's all ready to go. The next big step is pulling this dash off because yes, I did say we're turning it into a Tesla. And why am I upgrading this Sony head unit? Let me tell you a story. This is the Sony XAV 3000 head unit. You know, it's touch screen, Android Auto, all that stuff you want. It costs 600 bucks, and it's probably to this day the worst $600 I've ever spent. And I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, today's an averagely sunny day in Melbourne, 
and I can barely see the screen. Number two, the radio is probably the worst designed radio interface I've ever used. It's so hard to go through and pick a station. None of them seem to want to save. You can't scan. It's really quite poor and the seek function doesn't even seem to work properly half the time. And don't even get me started on the Bluetooth. It takes forever for a phone to connect if you can even get it to connect in the first place. It's terrible. And now my third gripe with this head unit is Android Auto, the whole reason I bought the damn thing. And firstly, you have to plug your phone in, which I knew, I know it wasn't wireless, you have to plug your phone in to use it, and then you can access it, and look, I honestly think it's pretty lackluster. This isn't the head unit's fault, this isn't Sony's fault, this is Android Auto, but there's very limited options for navigation apps, uh, you can't use any of your new tracks or anything on here, it's literally got your, your Google Maps and Waze and that's about it, so there's not much on it. If you want to zoom in, you can't zoom in the how you used to on an iPhone at all, this tap, and it's just... You can't, you can't use this properly while you're driving, it's just dangerous. And the same goes with even with Spotify. I'm trying to pick music and play a song and Spotify is just hard to use. Like it's meant to be all nice and easy, but all my playlists, it takes forever to actually get to a song I want to get to. You have to use everything with a voice command. It's really hard, it's really clunky, and I just don't think it's a refined sort of system. So if you strip back the whole Android Auto thing, you're left with a $600 radio that's got a crappy tuner on it that is so hard to find radio stations and a pretty average Bluetooth system. So for 600 bucks, you could see how it wasn't really that impressed. And now I'm sort of just stuck with it because I spent all that money and you know, I can't really get rid of it. But then the other day I got an email from a mob called a Toto and they make a head unit with Android in it. So it's like, a, it's, it's basically, if you could imagine like a, a tablet mounted as your head unit, this is sort of what it is. You can download whatever app you want. You can use YouTube, you can, there's no restrictions on it. You can use whatever programs you want on it. And it's the same price as this Sony head unit, but it's it's got everything else. It's got the radio, it's got everything, Bluetooth. So I'm like, Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll try it. it you know, it's, it can't be any worse than this. So I'm going to see if this Atoto S8 Pro is better than a flagship Sony head unit. So they're the same price. Let's see which one's better. So here it is. But before we can actually put it in, we're going to get this old one out. So let's get the dash out, all this off, and yeah, have fun getting that out. <laughs> all right, so dash is out. I think the best way to go about getting <laughs> these plugs out is obviously there's a tab from the bottom, so use the tab. Just because they're all old and been in there for like 30 years, <laughs> they're a bit rough. So you just gotta be gentle because you don't want to break any of the plastic because it can be frail after all these years. So just be really smooth on the gear and just take it out slowly and you'll be all good. But now it's all out, so take out our old head unit. All right, so as you can see, old head unit is out. So. Got all the cables in there. I'm just gonna do a test fit and just see how the new one fits up and I'll show you what it looks like as well. So we're going from a seven inch screen to a 10 inch screen. So a lot bigger, <laughs> like a lot bigger. So yeah, this is the Atoto um, S8 Pro. Full touch screen unit. Yeah, as you can see, it actually sticks out a little bit further than the double dim because it's actually too big to fit in a double dim slot. So we're gonna have to make sure this is gonna be able to fit properly, but I'll go ahead and I'll test fit it now and see how it's gonna fit up. All right, so I've just done the test fit. I think it's gonna all fit. Now let's wire it. All right, so it's nearly together. Heaps of wires, obviously, for everything, but it's nearly in there. I'm just doing now running all the antennas because this thing has GPS antenna, Wi-Fi antenna, cellular 4G antenna. So we're gonna rattle the antennas through the dash up to the window. Um, so doing that at the moment, making sure everything's plugged in. And then um, once that's all in, good to put the dash back together and fire it up. So yeah, we'll just keep going. All right, so it's all in. Last night I uh, spent the time basically just putting all the plastic back together, all the dash back on nice, making sure it's all worked, wired up all the switches um, and it's all working. But before I show you it all in action, um, I'm gonna actually take this bottom panel off and paint it black. And I've also got a new part to go on the panel, a little uh, voltage display. So take the panel off, paint it, get this in, and um, yeah, we'll see how it looks and we'll show you how it works. So after pulling the panel back out of the car, I cut a little hole out for that voltage reader. I then grabbed the spray paint, went to town with a flat black sort of finish. And that's it in. It has turned out so well, it looks grouse. Uh, the volt gauge, I can really finish it off the look. 
painting it black, it fits in, it doesn't stick out really badly. It just looks so sick next to the huge new screen. Look, still some cables that you can see which you need to clean up, but with the UHF all nicely tucked in and everything, like I'm so happy with it, it looks grouse. But anyway, you've seen it now. Let me show you what it actually does, what all the switches do, and show you what this head unit's like. All right, so everything's in, we're back in the car, and I'm ready to show you guys what it's all like, what it does, how much it costs, what these switches do. We're gonna cover it all. So firstly, yep, the panel's back in, it's all painted now, just cheap Bunnings paint painted flat black but it comes up a treat um, I added that voltage meter so essentially this is measuring the second battery voltage and it's got a little display up here which meant to show you how full it is I mean it's not entirely accurate it's just going off voltage but you know it's a good quick, quick visualizer to see what your battery's on um, obviously we still got our USB port sockets there and our UHF sort of plug-in spot for our handheld unit which is sick and yeah it all looks really neat it's come up really well I'll talk about these switches in a second and show you what they do because there's some cool stuff. But I want to show you first the head unit and what it's all what it's all about and what it does. So this is the Atoto S8 Pro. It's essentially a tablet for your head unit. And you might say that's overkill as to have a tablet as a head unit. Yes, it is. Like you're not gonna be watching YouTube when you drive, obviously. You're needing to, you know, do emails or anything while you're driving. But what it is really good for is maps. And this is the whole reason I wanted it. I used to use Android Auto, and as I explained before, it's terrible and that app system is just garbage. It just doesn't work well. It's really hard to zoom. The maps like hard to see. The this is the screen's fantastic. So we can go straight in here on Google Maps go somewhere which isn't my house <laughs> um, because this does have GPS. This has this has three antennas it comes with. It comes with a GPS antenna, a cellular 4G antenna, and a Wi-Fi antenna. So how I'm getting all this data and how we're watching everything is because it's using my phone's hotspot. So essentially, I've got it set up. So as soon as it connects to Bluetooth, the hotspot automatically turns on the phone and then this connects to it. So that's how I've got cellular and data on here and it can do things, but you can have the maps offline anyway, which I would have done if I couldn't have done that. So as you can see, got a whole map of Google Maps and you can do everything, just pinch to zoom in. It's all nice and clear. It has all my um, locations uh, marked, my POIs, and it's the full-fledged Google Maps app, not the version that Android has that's bad. But not only Google Maps, because this is a tablet, you can download whatever apps you want. So I've got new tracks on here, which is really good for driving out that we use when we go out. So as you can see, you can go in here and look at all the tracks. It shows like the difficulty on them. It's a really good app if you want to have a look, because you can like say, oh, okay, that track's going to be hard, or that track might be easy or whatever. It gives you good um, estimation to on time, like how long it takes to complete a section of track. New tracks is a really great app. So little things like that. Like look how nice that is to have on your screen while you're driving. It's fantastic. Um, Wiki camps, of course, other apps I use, you could go on all day about it, but being a tablet, you can put hammer on here, whatever you want, it's fantastic. Now, let's talk about this being an actual stereo, because I was concerned, like a Toto, I didn't know the quality of the DAC or how good the audio was going to sound. I can say this sounds any, this sounds as good, if not better, than my Sony head unit does. So, the customization of the actual EQ is also a million times better. You can adjust everything way more in depth in here it's really quite advanced and you got obviously you can adjust every single speaker individually and it's it's really in depth so i've got my subwoofer off it i've got all my car speakers all running off it and it's bloody awesome like it sounds literally the same as my sony head unit does so so another thing is probably the radio like i thought okay it's probably going to be a might be a bad radio no this radio app is better than what was on the sony head unit once again like it's so much easier just to tap through stations there's actually a search function you can like favorite stuff much easier on the, than this one um yeah it's great it controls my aerial makes it go up and down does all that stuff it's like a full-fledged radio it's, it's it's literally the same as the radio but it's got all that extra apps and stuff you can use too so it's bloody awesome um works really well so as you can see you can watch youtube uh and use Whatever app you want, there's no restrictions on this, like how the Sony head units have all the restrictions where you can't watch YouTube or anything like that with the Android Auto, but on this you can free roam to do whatever you want, not recommending that you do it, but the option's there. And if you want to use Bluetooth, that's totally cool, you can do that, works the same as pretty much any other stereo, but a lot better than that stereo. It pairs so much easier, and it's just on there. You can have multiple devices paired at once, you can just tap through and change. Um, it's got a massive keypad, it's got all your contacts, I'll blur these phone calls, everything. It, it's fantastic, it's, it's really good. Um, but if you did still want to use Android Auto, it comes with like 
four USB inputs for like charging and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and all that stuff. So you can still use those features if you want to. You can use them all there, there's cords for them. But because it is a standalone unit, I just listen to Spotify, like standalone. I don't even use my phone anymore. Like it's literally the end, this tablet does it all. And there's no more trying to reach into your pocket, grab your phone out, pick a song, put it down. Like I just jump in the car, start it. My playlists are here, ready to go. Like it's just, it's awesome. And another thing you might think, Oh, when he changes gears. Yes, I know, it's it's close. It doesn't actually hit, but it is very close to hitting. This is my biggest concern. I didn't think I was gonna fit it in, but you can see it just fits into the 80, where you can cycle through the gears and it works. Um, so this head unit does obviously stick out a bit. It's not like a flash, um, flat dim into double dim slot. It comes out a bit, but you can still change gears, but just be note that it is, if you have massive hands maybe, you might touch it, it is kind of close. And I know on a car like a GQ Patrol, like where that is, it's not gonna fit in at all. Like, but Liam wouldn't have it doubled in anyway. If you're in a GU Patrol, it'd be mint where you can have it up there, that'd be awesome. But on the 80s, they do fit in, it's a pretty good dim spot. And uh, yeah, it fits in all right, but it is close. So a cool thing about this unit is it has GPS antennas. It has cellular antennas, Wi-Fi antennas. So I've got GPS, the front glass here, uh, 4G antenna and a Wi-Fi antenna. So that's awesome because when I'm out on the tracks with no service at all, I can have my maps downloaded offline and still get my GPS location and navigate. And I think that's the best thing. It's, it's navigation that I think this is gonna be a game changer for because you can like look around and just have your GPS location following you. And yeah, it, it's, it's a really awesome thing to have GPS on your head unit that's not connected to your phone, which might not have GPS or might run dead, or it's a small screen, etc. Having a nice big map there, yeah, I think it's grass. So the price, this right now on Amazon is 550 bucks. This right now on Super Cheap Auto is $600. So this unit is $50 cheaper than my old Sony unit, and I honestly think it's five times better. Like it just, this is, I feel like, I'm not having a, I'm not having a dig at Sony here, I think it's just all brands. Um, they have the same product. They know that people will buy it. And when they're on shelves, it's super cheap and stuff. Like you go and they're looking for a head unit, you're just gonna buy this because you don't know that stuff like this exists in the market because I never heard of a Toto. I don't know what that brand is. You don't know the rep, but you know, like I think, I don't know. That's just products in general. But if you're looking for something that's like really the next level of infotainment, um, and if you're a bit of a nerd like me, getting a tablet like this with Android Auto on it, um, is bloody awesome, so yeah, I love it. So now I'll show you what the switches do. So, my whole idea behind this was to have stuff on the secondary battery, like to be able to play this, play music off here at camp on the secondary battery. So, what this allows you to do is turn off the car, which you obviously would lose your stereo and lose your UHF and everything, so I've got no keys on me, but then you can flick this button here, and it powers it on. So now that powers up my subwoofer, powers up my head unit off the second battery. So I'm not using my main battery, I'm not draining that battery, I'm using my secondary battery to run the stereo. So I can be out of camp and still have my tunes playing and not worry about battery. So that's awesome. Another one for my UHF, powers on the UHF by the second battery as well, handy. This one, top secret, no I don't know about that one yet. You'll know about that one in a couple weeks time, but that one does a cool thing. Um, and this one's just a blank for now. So yeah, Liam, you're more welcome to have this old one <laughs> if you want it, because yeah. I don't need it anymore. But, I don't know. I think, I think head units are a thing. Some people want to listen to tunes, and some people want to watch YouTube and navigate with their maps off it. Well, what do you think, Liam? What's... Yeah, well, obviously I agree with Patrick. If you're going to buy a doubled-in display, um, assuming you have, you know, the real estate to actually fit one in, this is much better than this. Just in every way. I've seen Patrick use this and it was very like, like you'd think something like this would be easy to use and like very functional, but you're not actually really getting it. Like this mm. is essentially the equivalent to just putting your phone in a holder on your dash because it yeah. does the same thing. Yeah. In fact, it allows you to do less, obviously for distraction reasons, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. But I don't see the point in it. It's about the size of a phone these days anyway. Like look at it. Most, I think iPhones, the biggest iPhones are like the size of that screen. No, exactly right. But yeah, with this, in my car, one, I, I, don't, I can't fit it because of where the like the radio spot is in my car. I couldn't physically put one of these in. And it, or, and even if I could, it would not be practical to use at all. Um, but yeah, if, like, if I could fit one, I might. I'm sort of in my car, I'm just happy to 
jump in, it auto Bluetooth to my phone, just a mm. single in unit, and it works. Mm. It, mm. it gives me music, and that's about it. That's all I care about. And if I re- like, I don't even have a phone holder in my car because I don't really look at my phone unless I'm out in the bush and need tracks. Yeah. So I'm just happy to have songs play, and that's about it. And I don't know, it just sort of. It depends who you are. It depends, like, if you you enjoy doing all this. Yeah, and I can definitely see the merit. Like, I'm sure there might be times where you're stuck at camp and you're like, Mm. I mean, while we can, I'm sure let's watch a movie or something. (laughs) Yeah, you can totally good. Yeah. I feel like the, the, the reason if I were to get one would be purely for the map. Applications. Hundred percent. Yeah, so, that maps and yeah. GPS is awesome. I wouldn't. I would not be concerned about anything else. I mean, I suppose you can use it. Like, it is cool that you can use it for phone calls and things too. Yeah. Because obviously, that's because it's on a mobile phone. You can actually do that then. I just think driving. it's like it's great because the screen's bloody huge. You can actually see the maps properly. This thing, the viewing angles were so bad. You couldn't mm-hmm. like it was in bright, bright sunny days. You couldn't see what was going on. This thing's bright as it's. Yeah. Viewing angles are awesome. So, what do you what do you think about my little panel? Yeah. Like panels, it? good, slim fit. <laughs> Good accessories. That's like what I've, I mean, mine doesn't look as nice, but I've just got like, yeah, 12 volt sockets and USBs and I use them. In, I don't even use like ignition power in my car because why would I do that when I can just constantly have something charging? Dude, second batteries are the, are the best. So, like, it's so good. Yeah, and, uh, and as for the, um, like the putting the radio on second battery, mm. yeah, I think that's very good. Even though I don't really use my thing that mm. much. Like on second battery because I usually just use like a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. Um, or a mate's got one or whatever. But I can definitely see the merit, especially if you've actually got decent speakers too. Like then obviously mm. you want it on second battery because yeah, that's what you for want sure. for your camp speakers. Yeah, yeah. So. Nah, it's yeah. a cool little mod. It's just good because, uh, yeah, the panels, you don't have to hack the dash up. Um, mm. And it's just like custom to do whatever spec you want, how many switches you want, you can do it all. So. So I've been able to put stuff on the second batteries, an easy cheap mod that you can do and when you're camping and you still want to play tunes, music, charge stuff, all that, makes it a hell of a lot easier. Being able to just charge phones really easily uh, and it's all on the secondary battery is awesome. Um, I think it's an awesome mod for camping when you want to play music off your secondary battery um, and anything. You could jump in your car at camp and look at the tracks you're going to do the next day. Like, it's just really cool. Um, I'm sure not everyone needs this. I know Liam probably doesn't care about a head unit with a touchscreen on it. You're probably just happy with one just to place tunes. And a lot of people would be like that. But if you are in the market for a doubled in touchscreen head unit, check out this stuff before you go and just walk into your auto store and buy one of these because it's pretty crazy what you can get at the same price, which will do a million more things. So yeah, that was the Atono S8 Pro and my dual battery stuff. So I hope you enjoyed as always. Uh, Give it a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next episode.